Hey everyone, just wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about this new series that we're in. We're calling it uh, Vital Christianity. And this, this week we talked about uh, the principles of practical faith. And I wanted to start by just explaining that there's naturally a, a tension to manage. There's a tension between always feeling like we have to be on for God um, and because the last few weeks have been pushing us to think outside of ourselves and to take on a cause and a mission and, and to be kingdom citizens. And I, obviously that's what we're called to do. But I've also been railing against this idea that, um, you know, that we get locked into or we put the shackles of our minds in because we get sucked into the routines of life. And I kind of was putting that down. And, and yet I was trying to make a point, right? But this time I'm trying to come back to it and say, you know what, though? In the routines of life, that's where the scriptures talk about be faithful with little. And it's in those routines that we need to still figure out what does it mean to follow Christ. And so that's why I talked this morning, you know, this past Sunday about the principles of practical faith. And um, the first one, in order to stay vital in our faith, we talked about being clear about our purpose. Um, you know, each and every person is here for a reason. And you're here, like the here and the now is significant. Um, God has you, no matter what your story is, no matter what you've been through, good or bad, you are here now for a reason. And you're unique and God wants to use you and he wants to make a difference through you. And so that's in the everyday stuff. That's in something beyond yourself. Um, whatever that is, that's the journey, right? And we talked about like, this isn't a sprint, this is a marathon. And this is so important to recognize that we're constantly works in progress. And we're trying to figure this thing out as we go. And part of that is being clear about our purpose. Um, you know, I believe that God has uniquely wired us a certain way. We're passionate about certain things. We're gifted in certain things. And each of us is different in that, right? And we have to kind of figure out our niche in that, um, but I think the important thing is we can't disqualify ourselves. So I was, um, I was thinking about that. And, and one of the things I asked is like, how many of us have like a personal mission statement? Because this is like the why of our faith, the why of our existence. Why do you think you're here? And um, this is very, very important because your why will bring a focus to what you do. You know, um, you'll say no to certain things because you know what? You're so focused on why you're here that you're gonna go, you know, you're gonna spend your time and your energy and your thoughts and your prayers and all these different things. You're gonna pour them into the reason why that you're here. And um, if you don't have a personal mission statement, then I would encourage you just to think about it. You know, think about through all your different experiences, what were the different life experiences that you had, even from a kid all the way through your adulthood? And what were the things that stood out to you, both good and bad, sad, sad times, just significant events that happened along the way, then just put them in chronological order. Um, and then just think about what are the things that you're good at? What are your skills? What are the gifts that you have? And, and then, um, you know, what are you passionate about? If you combine these three things, you know, you will start to see crystal clear how God has wired you. And, and then just simply put it into a sentence, you know, that captures it the best, the best way possible. Um, I think it's also important to connect it to Christ, right? Because in Christ, there was three things. There was three things that um, I talked about. The great invitation, the great commandments, and the great commission. The great invitation was simply when he talked to his disciples. He went out on the shoreline and he said, come follow me. And that's something every day that's put before us. Will we follow him? Will we learn to know and trust him? Will we, um, will we allow him to shape our our decision making? Will we include him in our everyday routines? Will we be aware of the presence of God? Will we be uh, led by the Holy Spirit? Will we be sensitive in our ears to listening to him? And uh, the more we're able to accept that invitation, the more uh, we will be, uh, I think, used by him in, in the little things and the things that go beyond, a little more missional. And then the great commandments, this idea of loving God and loving others. And everything in the scriptures is, is focused on those two commandments. So the more that we spend time with God, learning how to love him more, learn how to trust him more, uh, taking those steps of trembling trust, very, very critical. And then I'm going to talk about loving our neighbor in just a second. And then we also have the Great Commission, right? This idea of going and make disciples. That should shape 
uh, our, our mission statement and why we're here, what our purpose is. Okay, so the next thing that we talked about to stay vital in our faith was to focus on people. And this is that the great commandment of love your neighbor. I believe Jesus Christ was the most inclusive person to ever walk this earth. And I think as followers of Jesus Christ, we need to be intentional about building healthy relationships and being very, very cautious not to judge people because they believe differently than we do. They act differently than we do. They have political views different than ourselves. You know, they have different color skin than ourselves. Whatever those different things are, we need to learn how to love people, period, because people are what matter to God the most. And we talked about a scripture that was talking about we're called to be the light on the hill um, and to be a light in the darkness. And I, I kind of made a thing. I said, if I had this giant light and I came up to you and it was a floodlight and I shined it on your life and I was talking about all the bad things you ever did in your life, you know, that's not doing anyone any good. We know when we mess up. What we do need, though, is someone to walk into the darkness with us, shine that light and say, I'm willing to walk with you. And here's the way out. That's what we're called to do. And that means we will walk with people from all walks of life, people that think very differently than us, that have different worldviews than us, and we'll be there just to, to build relationships with them, to get to know them, to spend time with them. And, um, you know, this is the opposite of taking the Bible and bashing it over people's heads. I've seen that way too often when people do that. And, and, and I think that it's because we've been indoctrinated with this thing that we have to get people saved. We have to get people to heaven. Now, obviously, I think that's important, right? But that's not the whole picture. Uh, what we need to do is the, the great commandment of love God and love your neighbor. And, and all too often, in, in, uh, we get reckless. You know, you just go on Facebook for five minutes and you see how, quote unquote, Christians are reacting to different people that, that uh, are espousing different views than themselves. And my gosh, it doesn't look very Christ-like to me. So we need to be very careful of that and start to focus on people and get better at loving them. And then lastly, we just talked about be willing to do what is difficult. You know, uh, sometimes we don't feel like doing the things, but when we do them, you know, we know on the other side of it, it was the right thing to do. So the more we practice that, the better off we'll be. Um, so keep coming. You know, I hope that you, you enjoy this series. We're going to keep talking about how to be having a vital Christianity. And I can't wait for this Sunday. And I hope that you're able to come. Have a great day. See ya.